Well, hello there. It is about 11.40 as I prepare for my first PPE class. You are in my laborers and delivery room. Well, this is always going to be prayerfully if the Lord says the same every third Sunday of the month right before Monday morning because it is Monday midwife. And so um, the way the Lord gave it to me is for me to prepare to uh, send this message out to those who are a little bit more mature, who are really, really in the mode that he said that we should be in right now. And that is in the position. That means we're in the PPE. Uh, and that PPE stands for preparing, positioning, and equipping. And so in this, what I'm calling the laborers in delivery room, I'm praying that it will be a blessing to you. Uh, since it's going to be the first one, I was planning to come to you live, but because I'm dealing with some matters here, uh, I decided to go ahead on and do my recording to let the devil know it ain't gonna work. And so I pray that you are being blessed by what I plan to share here today. Um, and that since it's being recorded, uh, prayerfully you'll get it on Monday, even though I am in the labor and delivery room right now, before 1157 and so tonight i want to welcome you father we thank you for what you're about to share through me tonight i pray that those that are in the labor and delivery room that hear me are going to push and that they're going to become aware of the new now that you're telling us and i thank you that their eyes will be enlightened to be able to get what you have them to do for such a time as this and don't let go for such a time as this in jesus name all right well we're going to go ahead and talk you know in this time that we're in right now i begin to look at how joel chapter 2 talked to us about the opportunity we have even now you can see we have been blessed in ways that we never could even imagine especially because a whole lot of us gotten things that we couldn't even imagine that we would get because of this pandemic and so we need to call it, count it all a blessing, even though there's been a lot of painful things that we've seen in the midst of this. And I keep forgetting to set my timer, so I'm gonna set my timer now. And I didn't want to talk long on here, but I want to be able to give you all some nuggets that you can go, because this is a classroom. So I want to kind of get us to understand, you know, the mantle and the role of the uh, midwife and get to really see what God is speaking to us about. Now, when you get the link, that's going to be leading you from now on into uh, my Patreon. I want you to look around and kind of see where God would have you to participate and to sow in this ministry, because this is what he's leading me to do now at my age. And that is to make sure that I work smart and not hard. I pray that what I'm doing here will provoke you to copycat it so that you can do some of the same things so God can enlighten you and reach populations that he puts your hands to as well. And so let's jump right into our lesson. I want to talk about, you know, the spiritual fruit. I want to talk about how many of us need to look at and realize, even though we know it already, we're not going to be able to get around it. And that is we are in a new now. So I give me that word in the very beginning of the year, uh, before even pan you know, the pandemic had come. Uh, he just told me to prepare and position myself. And so those two words kept standing in my spirit. And I didn't really realize that. And being an apostolic midwife and being one who have always just, you know, worked really hard and been in education all my life and working with people and doing uh, social action work and community outreach, I've always felt that God had me to uh, birth people out or show them what to do. And I'm always trying to get more fruit inside of me so that I can always have my tree full so that I can give that fruit out. But a spiritual fruit assessment is very important for us right now to look and see what am I doing and what do I need to do to make things better? And how do I see myself right now, you know, with God and what gifts do I need to deliver, you know, and where, where, where am I in my competency, you know, have I been complacent, you know, have I been compromising, you know, have I been lacking evangelism, you know, where is my wisdom, what's lacking in me, you know, where is my spiritual roots, what is my conviction, and what, what is God saying about me right now, you know, is the light really, really on? you know, uh, in my life or what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, am I just sitting around trying to cope with this, you know, with this COVID or am I really, really pushing 
to try to help people who may be full of fear, may be full of doubt and unbelief, and maybe they're, you know, going through a lot of grief or whatever. But everything, you know, everything has a change, and everything that may look like a certain thing in the natural, God is still doing something in the spirit realm. So we got to filter everything through prayer. We have to discern to see what God wants us to do, how to do it, when to do it, not only just in our ministries, but for our families. And we got to obey God you know for what he's telling us to do we got to teach and we have got to learn okay we got to educate ourselves we got to position ourselves to be able to put our hands to a thing when god is telling us to put our hands to it and we want to leave out take our hands off the things that he tells us take our hands off and rest okay that's what i'm doing right now i am resting even though these lips are still going to go i know how to rest this body and my mind as god leads me and how and so now I want to jump into kind of talking a little bit about the PPE, you know, and how this place that we call such a disruption in our lives have come. But many of us are dealing with a lot of, I call them pain points. We have a lot of pain points. We have a lot of things we need to evaluate. We have a lot, a lot of core values that we need to look at as far as the ministry call in our lives, especially if you've been doing ministry for a while. I believe that God is trying to get you positioned for this new now, you know, and, and this PPE is what he talked to me about. Let me click on my notes just so I can see if I can see them in my PowerPoint here. And one of the things that I thought was very powerful, now you'll be getting some PowerPoints and things like that a little bit later on, and you'll see those in the Patreon, but you'll have to become a member of the Patreon. So I'm going to send the link there for you to be able to watch and look in there and see whichever one you want to get involved with when it is time. But I want to kind of talk more about uh, what this Greek word uh, midwife means, okay? You know, what it is, is, ta is talking about the real idea that the truth is a latent, it means that it's in the latent part of a mind of a human being. That means this person that's preparing to help someone to give birth, okay, or given birth uh, by answering intelligently propose questions or problems to handle those things. And that means that this leadership, uh, the type that I am doing for this type of uh, audio that you listen to now, I'm inviting you in my gifting, in my anointing to work within the latent of those who may not be in this realm or may not understand what they need to do because God gives us all a measure of grace of wisdom and understanding you know so he's given me a level and, and, and people always say oh you was born before your time well i believe that because i am alone and maybe that, that i have option to serve god alone and and to be in this place so that i can hear him and to serve those while i am still here to be able to give them as much hope and much leading as we possibly can and as we look at revelations two or uh, three and two we got to remember we got to strengthen that what is left what's remaining okay and we need to look at our spiritual growth process all the time for not just for saying that we want to be whole but we need to also look at what wholeness is it's inner healing okay divinely god wants to give us inner healing and so as an apostolic midwife i have to stimulate you i have to get your feet feet in the stirrup to get you to see that these are some things you got to look at to prepare that's what that ppe is to prepare to position yourself in the stirrups and that position equips you and i think that that was very powerful that he gave you the ppe not in the natural realm for that protective uh personal protective equipment but he's saying to us that we need to prepare and position ourselves and there is a difference in preparing and position and so i'll get in that in these lessons as well but i want to kind of talk about dealing with where we are right now and and to see what other things i need to do for this new now okay and so in this ppe he was speaking to me i was listening to someone teaching a class i think a month ago and they was talking about where are we as far as getting ourselves in a balance of this new place that we're going to have to realize that we can't do church as usual or ministry as usual you know i've been teaching for a few years about a pair of church and because we are a pair of church it's very important that we now really move our ppe our position and preparations to understand what we need to do so as a, a, a an apostolic midwife my main goal is for this particular time that we're in is a critical time 
And so we need to make sure that everyone that God has put to our hand, that we're in the divine position to help them, you know, develop and do kingdom purposes that God has for us. If we think about Revelation 3 and 2, it tells us to be watchful. It talks about to strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. That means those things, those people uh, that we may give up and those things that we have made a decision that we love God more than anything and that our flesh and those things that are materialistic to us, that they don't matter to us as much as making sure that we be in the will of God. And so those things that are ready to die, those things that we know that we may have to give our lives up to say we love God more than anything and anybody that may try to give us uh, the mark of the beast or what have you. Because he said, for I have not find, found thy works perfect before God. So we must be reminded when we're praying and sharing our testimony, all that's important because if people are saved, it's going to take us to realize that some things that we're giving out, even in our testimony, we have to be very careful because we don't know. People are in positions now, are so hungry and so thirsty to learn more that we have got to build altars Sometimes even in our backseat riding someone who may get a ride or someone in the grocery store at the cashier, uh, you know, place, we might have to just build an altar right there. So we got to look at what are we doing right now in the midst of this pandemic that we can reach the lost and the hurting. And so I want to talk about this PPE. I want to talk about uh, what he's ministering to me that I heard someone say that we need to be in a place <laughs> that I am thinking that you think about prisoners, okay, we feel like almost like prisoners now because we're in this house, you know, and, and we can't come out. Or when we do come out, we got to be so cautious all the time. I don't know about you, but I'm always trying to figure out, did I forget my gloves? What did I forget? I feel naked when I go out. I have to look around and see what I forgot because we're trying to protect ourselves. So it's almost like we're in a prison. But God is trying to get us to wake up, to be awakened. And so we're in a new now that we are re-entering in. And I thought that was very powerful. We're re-entering in for clarity, for the mission, for the vision. We have to look at it and really strategically see, as a spiritual midwife, but I, my goal is to make you see how to re-enter in again so that you can push and not be so faint, you know, because we all are going through, and we're all going to feel faint, you know. But as a midwife, my goal is to prayerfully speak to those who are mature in ministry or those who, as, as I say, the people say, I am born before my time. But we're dealing with a lot of pain points. And so we're going to re-enter in this new now. We're going to prepare. We're going to position ourselves in the stirrups so you can push, divinely push, when God say push and not push because you think it's just the best way to push. We're going to push when God say push. So I want to talk to you about that and that realm of the re-entry push tonight and what this mantle of the midwife is, okay, and what the role is. And so we've got to, in order to do that, we got to look at the big question here. We, that means I got to evaluate my shape. I got to evaluate my mission. I got to reevaluate my vision. I got to see what God wants me to do now with the core values and see what kind of timeline and what's causing me to prioritize and, and be delayed on prioritizing, prioritizing some things. And so we'll talk about that. But let's look at the issues in regards to the apostolic midwife. And so tonight, I just want to kind of talk about how the midwife, God is wanting many of you who are apostles, many of you who are evangelists or any of those in the fivefold, we all are midwife, even men. So if you're getting this from me and you are a male, it is because you are a midwifery. That's what they call it, a midwifery. I can't even have say it right, but it's M-I-D-W-I-F-E-R-Y, a midwifery, which means you're a midwife, but it could be anybody. It could be a man or a woman, but it is primarily someone who is strong and deeply rooted in conviction about helping others to have their babies in the spirit, okay? And that means that we believe in making sure that if we see destiny in you, and that's what most apostles who are seers, because I am, I see you before you get there. And so I have to be very, very strategic about when to tell you to push. I know when I first learned that I was an apostle before I even became commissioned, uh, it was very difficult for me because I was seeing so much in the spirit of our people that were standing before me talking, the Lord would let me see them be in places before they would even be there. I mean, they weren't even matured. But then me being immature in my gift, and I believe that this is what these 
uh, classes or uh, sessions would be like for those who are getting in the new PPE is to get our convictions and our missions and visions and things like that in order so that we won't put people in the stirs before time, but we want to be, we don't want to be like the Nicolaitans, you know, we don't want to be like them who have people uh, sitting on the pews and people are dying, uh, their gifts are just being perverted and not getting what they need. So we want to, we want to make sure that we're constantly making sure that we are creating disciples and helping people, there's my timer already, and helping people to get where they need to be. So I want to talk about first, what is the apostolic midwife? I won't be able to go over all of them today, but I do want to give you this part one, that there are countless numbers of men and women who really, really know that they're spiritually pregnant, who really, really want to know their identity, and many of them have not yet been identified. Many of those who have divine purposes, many of them, they birthed them out, but in the season that God is raising up these apostolic midwives, or midwifries, if you are a male, if you want to call it that. We're here now in this new now of this pandemic so that we can begin to now to prepare and equip people for where we are now. We don't want to be like the Nicolaitans, uh, 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 how do you pronounce it, Nicolaitans. We don't want to be like them who was found really guilty for having people just be there, placing these people that are late, never getting them prepared to learn their gifts just sitting them there, having them ignorant. They weren't even able to walk or do anything without them, with a thumb on them. So we want to make sure that as a spiritual midwife, that we're there to do what Jeremiah 1 and 5 tells us, that we are formed in the belly. He already knew you before you came out of your mother's womb, and he sanctified you, and he's anointed you as a prophet unto the nations, he told Jeremiah. And so we need to know and let people know that when we see the gift in them, now we need to stir it up and know where to put their feet in the stirrups to push. We need to be able to check them out, watch over them to know how far they dilated in their gifts so we'll know when to tell them to push. I don't want to preach. Every time I think about what God is doing now in this time where we are right now. It is horrible this pandemic has shown so much in our lives and people who we have seen across the you know globe. But God is using those who are still strong and trying to strengthen those things that remain for us to be able to push, go forward, and be coaches in the individual lives and to help them to push. And we've also been given the, been given the mandate to seriously discern these abilities to seriously discern the talents and the gifts and the skills of the people. So that's part of what this midwife is designed to do. But God has already known this before uh, we became uh, even born out of our mother's womb, before we even came on the earth. Uh, he's uh, designed a specific midwife for everybody. And the thing is, is that many of us won't own up to it because they don't like the name midwife. But that's really what we are especially when you have the apostolic all in your life and you have a prophetic gift. Those two usually kiss each other. So I really want you to first look at this first role that I want you to look at as far as a, um, an apostolic midwife is. The apostolic midwife, as I said before, it is not gender specific, okay, in the role. And both the modern and the ancient times, the, um, the majority of the midwives were female, and we know that. But in this season, God has called forth men and women in the church and the marketplace to assume their position as apostolic midwives. And we can see that very clearly in Ephesians 4, 11, 12. You know, if you think about that, he says he gave some apostles, some prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. You know why? Because he wanted to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry, for the, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So here are some primary roles and functions of the apostolic midwives that I want to give you. Now, the first one is the apostolic midwife must be one that recognized and they must be able to identify the individual that they will be mentoring, counseling, or teaching, you know, or that they're being taught or trained or they're being coached by this person that's helping them birth this process of the ministry calling their lives out. If you look at 1 Kings 19 and 19, it tells us, so he departed thence and found Elijah, the son of Sephat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he with the 12 
and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle on him. Now, when you think about that, as I said before, when we think about the mantle of Elijah to Elijah, God will assist us in this process to help find those sons and daughters. We might as well call them what they are because that's what they are. You know, people don't like you to call them a son or a daughter, but really, that's really what they are because they figure, well, I'm older than you. Well, they don't have anything to do with anything. Look at Jesus ministering to all those elders and everything. So God will assist us in the process to find those sons and daughters who need our mantle in order to complete the birthing process that God has put on your life into their lives. We cannot leave here full. We have to leave here giving these things out, teaching others how to move forward. Amen. And so they will come from all walks of life. They will have, they'll receive the guidance. They'll receive that anointing of wisdom off your life, that encouragement, that strength. They'll receive comfort in places that they've been weak and worn down and been believing themselves and with self-hating and self-doubt and all that and, you know, doubt and unbelief. And then we'll be there to give them comfort and we'll help them to be able to give birth to their destiny and to take this locked up place that was so tight and had so much doubt and unbelief and so many childhood wounds about what they could be, that destiny that was locked up in their spiritual womb is now, you had to say, the baby is kicking, right? Because you, as a spiritual midwife, has made that thing move in their lives. Just the simple word of, I see, I said, oh, that word of, I see that you are, I see you. Because when they say, I, when you say, I see, I see you, something leaps inside of them like Mary's baby. Something leaps inside of them saying, listen, oh God, you, you see that in me? I can't believe that you see that in me. Well, yeah, they see that in you. And so the second thing is the apostolic midwife, they must establish a personal relationship with that son or daughter. That means they have to really be able to let that person know they got to be open to them, you know, as this role in your life, being that role to them as a midwife is like a mother, someone who is really, really getting deep in that. Now, later on in the lesson, I'll talk about, you know, recognize those differences, you know, the mother, the midwife, and the uh, mentor, and so on. But right now, we're talking about the apostolic midwife. So that means you got to establish a personal relationship with that son or daughter, that person who is probably pregnant and don't know they're pregnant with purpose. And so this main issue that you're trying to do is get them to be able to, to you know, make sure you spend some time with them. Maybe it's during the week you may call them, or maybe you might deal with them weekly or monthly, whatever that is in consultation, you know, praying together and discipling them, teaching them like I'm doing over here, you know, through, through networks or you know, giving them some recorded messages or, you know, scriptures to make them look up things and make them, you know, to become more wise in different areas. And, you know, in Matthew 28, 19 tells us to go, you therefore and make disciples. You know, in many nations, we got to make sure we incorporate these great commissions as we help birth in our purpose through these people God has put to our, to our hands. And so the third thing is, and I'm going to get off of here because I don't want to make these long and we'll continue on in part two. But the third thing is the episode of Midwife and the son or daughter, they must be collaboratively working together to establish short-term and long-term plans based on what God is showing them and their dreams and their vision. Now, because of where we are now, we've got to show them how to re-enter in because many of them are still dealing with a whole bunch of loss, a whole bunch of fears and doubt because of what's going on with the pandemic. But we are in a re-entry of the pandemic. That is what that PPE is doing. That's what that preparing and position about. We'll get into that lesson. You'll know more about that. But the apostolic midwife, which means our sons and daughters, we got to work collaboratively together. So we got to see how we can get them resources. We got to see how to get them to tell us about their short and long-term uh uh, visions and dreams and you know hopes that they see and we got to look at those short and long-term plans based upon their dreams and hopes and and these prophecies and these just aspirations and talents and all their giftings and the skills you know we got to make sure they understand the difference between a gift and a talent but many people think they got a gift and it's just a talent you know and so we need to make sure as Havaka said they got to write the vision and make it and make, make it very plain you know, they got to write it down and make sure that they write and follow what God is saying and don't throw in some icing when God or maybe just want the cake made. He ain't told them to put no icing on and they got icing all over the thing and it ain't ready yet for the icing. So we need to make sure the vision is going to be for an appointed time. They're going to understand that and that they're going to understand what the end of it shall speak. And it won't lie. 
it, that, that they really press and allow you to show them how to press in. It's going to surely come to pass. And it doesn't matter what their age is and how long that dream is uh, been waiting. You know, it doesn't matter. Even though some have babies in their womb and been there for years because they never got with the right midwife. Okay, so your role is out identifying what's there that has been either tainted by somebody else that was overseeing them in ministry or at some church that they've been wounded by and they have a lot of deception, you know, and they may have been out of time and they may, may not have grace for where they've been trying to move in, you know, doing things they're not grace to do, you know, or trying to set up things that they don't qualify to set up yet because nobody's helped them to be able to understand those graces, those timelines, you know, long and short term. And so we need to look at what's dormant lying inside of them. Are they in a dormant state? You know, are their babies being born pre or how to say premature and on their way to die because they have went ahead of God? So what does matter the most as you begin to think on taking these uh, journeys with me in this 1157 uh, Monday Midwife uh, sessions is to know that what does matter is that God has foreseen He's planned that Kairos moment, that perfect time, you know, where he has already commanded the angel of the Lord to come to that person and to come to us, you know, to receive. That person has to receive by Holy Spirit. He is allowing us to connect with those individuals. It's not by mistake that they are with us. It's God's divine plan that they be with us because we are their midwife, okay? And they, they will not have the baby the way they supposed to have the baby without that divine Kairos moment with us. We are the divine perfect kingdom timing in their lives. And if they miss that, the baby may not come out. They may come out, but it may not come out the way God is divinely playing for it because they missed their, their, uh, the kingdom uh, midwife. And so we're there to make sure they have that perfect timing that kairos baby right whereby he has already commanded the angel to come there to form that apostolic midwife to show them how to trouble the water so to speak you know that that they've been in and that they may be going through in their emotions or whatever or they may have been delayed about so we're there to shake that water to test that water bag to see if we should pop it right now or not to set those feet in those stirrups to see whether or not it's time for you to push so the apostolic midwife is uh, you know appropriately and able to activate that's what we're there to do we're there the role is to activate the gift within that person to unlock the keys of their destiny well that's all i got for the night we're going to talk about oh god i pray that i'll get a chance to talk about a little of this here somewhere up the road or i'll put it on my on my um, Patreon, where you can choose to see if you want to listen to it. I'm going to be talking about those Nicolaitans, you know. Uh, I think it, I always say it's Nicolaitans or whatever, Nicolaitans. You know, where they were just so, you know, and Jesus talked about the Nicolaitans twice in the book of Revelation. Revelation 2 and 6, and Revelation 2 and 15. He talked about how Jesus hates them because uh, both of these teachings that they had, the, these deeds, and did you know the word Nicolation is made up of two parts, Nikos, which means to overcome, to, dom what's it, to dominate, and Laos, which means the common people, or the laity people, the people that are weak, the one that we supposed to be making strong to create disciples. They kept them ignorant. They kept them unable to walk out their callings. We're going to get into it. I don't want to get into it right now, but you will find it, I'm sure, later on, probably in the month of August sometime before we get into our next teaching on the third Sunday in regards to our every third Sunday uh labor and delivery uh room apostolic midwife i pray this has been a good lesson for you please make sure that you encourage those who know me now because i'm not sharing this with all those different other people but i am sharing with those who know me i believe that you would support this ministry you know i've never ever done this before i've never had a patreon uh site and this is the first time I'm doing that. I pray that you will learn how to do it too. I believe God wants to bless us all. We've got to strengthen those strength, those things which remain. I believe God is coming to see, coming back to see whether or not if we really are going to be moving in our prophetic time that we are in. We're in a very critical time right now. Uh, pandemic is here. We might as well face that. We don't know how many 
uh, more different uh, things that we're going to have to face, but we, we have faith in him and I trust him with my life as I do with yours. But we do need to prepare. We do need to make sure we are in position. And so I am here to be that midwife for you. And I pray that you'll be the midwife for me, the iron sharpened iron. And I pray that in these revelation teachings that we are going through, I pray that God will help us to understand how we have got to make sure that we are not going to be able to do this alone. And everything that we do, we're going to have to make sure that we get the education that we need. We're going to have to pray, watch and pray. You know, we can watch, but we're going to have to pray too. And we can pray, but we're going to have to act, okay? So we need greater enlightenment. We need greater wisdom. We need to know how to re-enter in again to give God glory first and then seek him for how to deal with these last day critical times for the next three to six months we are going to be facing some things but i believe together as we begin to re-enter in that's what we're doing we're doing a re-entering into this new now of this pandemic but this time we're coming in strong because we're going to be working together to have this episode of push as a midwife to one another to prepare and position ourselves for what's ahead and i know that as we do that god is going to show us how to plan to strengthen those things that remain. God bless you so much. I will talk to you soon. Please make sure that you don't forget to be sure and listen for next month to see what God is going to be sharing with us. Amen. Love you so much. Talk to you soon.